Reggae Uprising podcast family and welcome to the Lockdown Special 3.0. Every time I do one of these specials, I'm always hopeful that this will be the last one. But unfortunately, this is not the case. If you are a regular listener of Reggae Uprising podcast, you will know that this show is all about connecting people of the African diaspora and every week I feature a new guest who shares their wisdom alongside their journey of inspiration, all backed by a soundtrack of sweet reggae music. Now, as this is the Lockdown 3.0 special and health is at the forefront of everyone's mind, I want to focus on the positive and what we can control. I've picked out two previous guests and zoned in on the information they shared empowering the temple that is your body. The two featured guests are co-owner of Kingdom Health and Fitness Limited, Jay McCoy, and dietitian and nutritionist and consultant owner of Restore My Nutrition, Maxine Palmer. We will be covering veganism, herbs, beneficial foods for different age groups and beneficial foods for different ailments. But before we get started with that, we must set the tone with reggae music as I am a reggae singer, songwriter and a little bit of soul and obviously the conscious lyrics too as well as being your host for Reggae Uprising podcast. So I'm going to play one of my original works to raise the vibration. Do not forget to check out my other regular weekly show, Reggae Uprising, which I do every Monday, so you can get all of my shows and all of the music videos that go with my songs via daniel.co.uk, where you can also keep up to date by subscribing via daniel.co.uk. Right, let's get started with Bless My Soul by me, Daniel. This is dedicated to, well, you know who you are. Bless my soul 
I hope you enjoyed those high vibrations. If you would like to check out the official music video that goes with those sounds, again, all you need to do is go to daniel.co.uk. I will also leave that link in the description for you. As a vegan of 10 years, I was very aware of the growth last year of the vegan food industry. Whether that was the result of the pandemic making people more aware of their health or if this was simply a fulfilled business plan of the food industry to be at the forefront of this relatively new food market. Now, as January has been marked out as Veganuary since 2014 by founders Veganuary.com, who state on their website that during the 2020 campaign, more than 400,000 people took a pledge to try a vegan diet. More than 600 brands, restaurants and supermarkets promoted the campaign and launched more than 1,200 new vegan products and menus in the UK market alone. Now, some more vegan info relating to Africa. The Lancet is a weekly peer-reviewed general medical journal. It is among the world's oldest and best-known general medical journals, and in 2015, it published its research results on the world's healthiest diets. Countries at the top of the list included Mali, Chad, Senegal and Sierra Leone. Due to the diets rich in fruits, vegetables and whole grains. An example of a majority plant-based diet is the Ethiopian cuisine, of which the staples include the ancient grain teff used in a sourdough flatbread called injera, as well as many lentil and bean-based dishes. Now, as this is the final episode of January... For this lockdown 3.0 special, we're going to hear what owner of Kingdom Health and Fitness Limited, Jay McCoy, had to say about veganism and some very helpful herbs. Okay, so what made you choose to change your diet from meat eater to vegetarian? Um, the amount of people that are dropping, uh, the, the, the amount of family, friends that are seem to be getting ill and the, the age seems to be lowering and i think that was that was alarm bells for me and that was a red flag uh my my father also ended up with cancer uh, which was the first alarm bell and my sister ended up with uh, uh, ms um my auntie died of diabetes uh, i think that was a, a real sort of concern for me that you know something is wrong and uh it's down to the food. And so a, a, a change has to happen very, very quickly. Right. Um, so, you know, since you've become a vegetarian, have you encountered any prejudices from our community when you tell them that you don't eat meat? Yes. Multiple. They don't understand that because they find it an offence because they're saying, well, you're not really a, a Jamaican or you're an English person. Um, pretending to be a Jamaican or of Jamaican heritage, what's wrong with that food? I says it's not conducive for us. It's slave food. And uh, I had one in particular who was a so-called Rasta, uh, but he's there talking to me, giving me a lecture about um, being this so-called idle man eating rice and peas and chicken. I says real Rastas wouldn't eat that. They wouldn't touch meat with a barge pole. So that's kind of like the kettle calling the pot black, really. Have you ever um, had any encounters where um, people have even tried to slip in some meat into a dish without you knowing or anything like that? If I'm honest with you, if I can be totally honest, I think that it came closer to home. So my mum, who I'm going to say, well, I think all Jamaicans will say that my mum is the best cook in the world. So me then telling my mum I'm not going to eat uh, curry goat and rice and rice and peas and chicken was like somebody uh, uh, somebody kidnapped my son <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> what, what's wrong with my food she, she did take it very very personal the whole family took it personal and uh, they took it personal and sort of blamed my wife for encouraging 
me to be uh, a more sort of natural plant-based um, person as opposed to eating a, a meat-based diet. I think that really uh, raised many, many eyebrows uh, on, a, on a person. It took a long time, years for them to come around. Right, is your wife vegetarian as well then? She's a vegan. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So she, she doesn't she doesn't eat no meat of any kind. She's, um, I think that's been probably about over a decade now. Right, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, it's it's just, um, and, the, and the benefits outweigh. They, they really, really do. Well, speaking of that, when vegetarianism and veganism is debated, one of the talking points that is always argued is that um, those diets are not balanced as there is a lack of protein. What is your thoughts on this? I think, I think the, uh, the jig is up on that one. I think that from a scientific nutritional point of view, uh, we can look. I take the, the first barometer. And I think after then, people tend to go, well, let me think about that for just a minute. And maybe either won't respond to you, or they'll say, maybe I think there's something in what he's saying, which is, here is Mr. Silverback Gorilla. He is in Africa. Um, I think the, the, the largest one recorded, I think, was just under half a ton. I think they can move about 30 to 40 miles an hour full speed. Uh, one of the most agile animals on the planet and has got literally no body fat on him. So, and what does he, what does his diet consist of? Plants and bananas. Would you really want to mess with someone like that? Not really, on a good day. So, um, that's that. And also looking at physical, um, my wife is a personal trainer. I think her heaviest lift uh, while she's been on uh, this this transition, uh, leg press is 325 kg. Um, and, and people have argued that either, okay, she doesn't eat any meat, but then she must take steroids because no woman can lift that amount of weight. But there you go. It's it's It says, it, it, everything has been said there within, within that. They find it almost like it's impossible. But more and more people um, are uh, investing into that. And some of the strongest people in the world are, are plant-based. Now, on your journey, how do you feel that you've benefited from your lifestyle changes? Physically, more energy, more concentration. Uh, you feel a lot lighter. It helps, lose, it helps with weight loss as well, naturally. And you don't feel uh, so bloated. I think the it, I think the benefits just outweigh pound for pound. Um, you haven't lost anything. There's no deficit. You don't crave uh, the, the the meat and the 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 after effects of you know sometimes you, you get like stomach cramps, which I used to suffer with. Um, and you don't get any of that with with um, plant based food because they the transition from eating the food again is much quicker so it absorbs in the body uh, better and uh, you get those you get those benefits the butter can extract better because it's natural it's plant-based right um your body is your temple so anyone who fully understands or should i say overstands um, absolutely this, that's right this will also overstand that food is medicine um, on Correct. your journey, what foods would you say are true to this way of thinking? Uh, cannabis oil, black seed oil, and merengue. Can you tell us the benefits uh, of those? Well, black seed oil um, is the one probably, well, cannabis and black seed, probably the most spoke about uh, black seed for literally curing everything apart from death. <laughs> and... Uh, Cannabis literally healing um, every sort of pain. And I think it's key. I call it head office because it's a receptor. So it connects to the brain and it identifies all the sort of your pain receptors in every part of the body. And I think that's, that's truly amazing. Truly, truly amazing. That's perhaps why there's so much money involved, especially in America right now on the stock market, 
that uh, uh, that are looking into it. And I've now said a recent document has come out that the saying that uh, cannabis is one of the key components to eliminating uh, the COVID nineteen. Okay, tell us more about that. Um, they have done experiments with full spectrum uh, CBD uh, cannabis oil, and again, it's down to the extraction process. So, if you look at the continents where the Earth is more fertile, you will you will find uh, the potency of the actual cannabis oil. So, you're looking at Gambia, Ghana, uh, Mozambique, Congo. Um, Australia, which is actually um, our original continent as well, they have found that the the CBD, once uh, consumed uh, orally, when it, by the time it hits the immune system, it uh, is a protector cell, and it creates the body to become alkaline, as it all the foods that are to our native country are alkaline, as the late Dr. Sebi had said. No virus can live in an alkaline body. Wow. Wow. We are actually going to get on to alkaline foods um, in just a moment. But I want to go back to one of the oils that you mentioned earlier, which is Marenga oil, because you didn't tell us the benefits of that. Can you tell us that, please? Uh, Marenga oil powder. Um, again, it is high-density protein. Um, it's, it's very, very good for cholesterol. Um, it's very, very good, also good for weight loss. Um, it is good for both men and for women. It, it also helps uh, balance your serotonin and melatonin level. They all do, but it, uh, um, I think Marenga and CBD oil are more equal or they have a very good comparison between the two in, 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 helping, in helping sleep, which is vital. And again, they also uh, help endorse the body to become very, very alkaline, which is key for us to eradicate the multitude of illnesses that we seem to fuss and, uh, suffer with. Okay. Can you um, share a little bit more knowledge on any herbs that you might be aware of that other people might not be? Um, they might be native to Jamaica or Africa or, you know, there might just be herbs that you know about that you think people should know more about. Uh there's so many herbs uh nomi fruit uh, comes to mind or noni fruit depending on the pr- pronunciation uh it's and what's that good for what is that uh again it's a very unusual looking fruit uh it looks partly like a um an overgrown uh, <laughs> uh grape <laughs> an overgrown grape but it's packed with uh, amino acids uh, B11, B2, D3, um, calcium, great for energy. Uh, it's, it's just got a multitude of energy. It's, it's great for liver, fantastic for liver. Um, it's a good immune booster as well, and it does help with cognition. Uh, it's, it's, if, if you were looking to consider the colon cleanse, which I think we should all do, I think Nomi Fruits fantastic and it's quite a sweet tasting fruit as well so i know a lot of this, uh, the the herbs are quite pungent in taste and we find it difficult to consume like black seed oil it's uh, that's a difficult one great benefit but it's it's uh, it's not the best tasting so there's nummy fruits uh, also i would say a celery cherry which i think is six thousand times uh more powerful or potent than vitamin c again Energy, uh, high cholesterol, liver, blood pressure, diabetes, fantastic. Uh, what else is there out there? Um, rhodiola is fantastic as a root. Uh, I'm not sure if people are aware of rhodiola. Uh, it is a root native to uh, Persia, um, West Africa, fantastic for energy. Um, great for cell regeneration, uh, uh, body mass, uh, calcium, packed with protein and very, very good as a, a stabiliser for, for heart condition. Okay, can you tell us where the other two are native to? Um, Nami fruit is Gambia, Ghana. 
also can be found in Peru. Uh, and a silly cherry, you can pick that one up um, closer to, I think you can actually get it in Jamaica as well. Um, that you can pick that up from there, uh, and also uh, on us in Australia. Right, and can you? You did touch on a colon cleanse. Now, people might not be aware of what that is, what that entails, what the process is, and what the benefits are to that. Can you please enlighten? Colon cleanse is uh, the, the full cleaning of the immune system. Uh, so all all um, diseases start in the gut. Uh, so when we look at when we look at that. Your, your, the main key component for the problem is the food being broken down to be used as energy. There are blockages with food, um, and the, and the, and the stomach and the gut is working 24 hours a day, literally trying to break down all of this food to convert as energy and to be utilized in that way. But when there is an obstruction, uh, from that, you find that you you have, you've had many, many problems with the colon cream. What that does basically, it eliminates, uh, it, it gives, almost like the, the, the whole body having a, a, a valet, or valeting. So it cleans the immune system out. Another good one for that is uh, activated charcoal. Cleaning the whole immune system out of any bacteria that will then cause these um, triggers to happen in the body. Uh, so it's, uh, as I say, prevention is better than cure. So I think that they don't need to be done literally every single day, but once a month, it is very, very good to have a cleanse, especially for for men that are suffering with uh, prostate cancer or women that are having thyroid problems. I think that's very, very, very key to get rid of. If you enjoyed listening to this brother's knowledge and would like to hear more, you can go to daniel.co.uk where you can check out the full episode and hear all of the wisdom that Jay McCoy has to offer in his feature episode right let's get back to the music and i've picked this selection as my vegan community will confirm that the love for avocado is real (laughs) so i thought this selection was perfect to follow on from these talks of veganism and herbs here we go with janine avocado Just some grow And my favorite thing he bring for me is avocado Avocado, my love the 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 And when the pear not in the season Still in no when my wall The steam up with the shell them on the open fire And everything me need you know my king deliver For hype my with the sweet collie draw, sweet collie draw, me love the sweet collie draw, sweet collie draw, me love the sweet collie draw, sweet collie draw, me love the sweet collie draw, sweet collie draw, me love the. Can I be in my bike for bring the good love to me? Nothing too high, just a hundred fifty. Him used to be a soldier, so we built properly. For treat me like a body with the right remedy. No girl around can intervene cause she no know what I want This perfect specimen of him me humble lion Humble lion, me mama humble lion Humble lion, me mama humble lion Humble lion, me mama humble lion Humble lion No man no violate from him the on the scene The only tenderness him have reserved with the queen and if you catch a glimpse of him, you know what I mean. Nearly seven foot, I'm 
muscle and a size 14 Size 14, him of the size 14 Size 14, him of the size 14 Size 14, him of the size 14 Size 14 So as you can imagine, me no need nothing more My belly and my body and my heart Well, sure, say him alone, I get the heat Unleash the cure Everything is for pathetic And we future secure Future secure Yes, we future secure Future secure Yes, we future secure And when are the youths Them time for forward And we watch them a grow Brilliant and beautiful And black like a yo you teach them and inspire them with things them for know Like how you catch a princess with the avocado Avocado, me love 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 the avocado Me love the avocado Get out what you put in in life. So why would your body be any different? There is much knowledge to be gained from herbalists and healers such as Dr. Sebe. The more we delve into the processes our food goes through, what foods are beneficial in supporting our body's biology, we obtain more control over our own destiny. Now, there are many places to start on your food journey, depending on your goals, as we are all unique. So whether you choose to research alkaline diets, ancient grains, Dr. Sebi's food list, African or Caribbean foraging for herbs and everything in between. Now, there's been much commercialization of superfoods, which has inflated the price of many healing foods, meaning that they are less accessible to people with low funds. Luckily, there is a vast variety of foods that are extremely potent in their food healing qualities. In sharing more food knowledge and starting you on your food journey, I hope you will reap its benefits in abundance. May your harvest be fruitful. Dietitian and nutritionist Maxine Palmer shares her wisdom from her episode on foods for different age groups and foods for different ailments. As we go through the different stages in our lives, um, our diets have to change. Can you give us some of your insight into the different stages and recommend some key foods and also some of the foods that we should try and avoid? So we're going to go through these different stages. So the first one I want to touch on is um, baby's first foods. So do you have any? So, yeah, so baby's first foods, it's best to go with what baby's natural natural tastes are. Um I would recommend trying them with foods which are sweet in taste because breast milk is sweet in taste. So if you're even bottle feeding, it's slightly sweet in taste. So babies have a natural sweet sweet tooth. Um, it's, you're more likely to successfully wean them onto food if you start off like that. So some examples are um, butternut squash or sweet potato mashed down a little bit. And just, just do small amounts. So small, um, a tip is to fill an ice cube with pureed pure red foods um so pure red squash and just try them with a little bit at a time um therefore you're more likely to be successful if you start off like that add in other foods along the way just add in one food at a time try them with the food um for a while before you introduce the next food and it's a slow process and um, at that stage you're not looking to give them a complete diet you're just trying to get them to try as wide a variety of foods as possible because all their nutritional needs are being met by the breast milk or by the formula milk um, so it's really just developing their taste buds and their taste for different types of foods. Um, so introduce as much variety as you can at that stage. Are there any that should be avoided at that early stage in life? Yes, yeah, so at that early in life, um, you're not, it's not advised to give them um, honey, uh, just because honey can lead to um, infant butalism, which is just a bacteria that can be found in honey, can lead to problems. So just avoid honey at that stage. 
Um, also, I wouldn't give them anything to anything with added salt or sugar either. Just give them natural foods. So natural vegetables and fruits is what should be started off. I know um, in the past, um, rusk and rusk was quite quite a common thing that was introduced to babies, and I think that had quite a bit of sugar in it. Um, it there's really you can sweeten things with fruits themselves. So I, I'd say anything that you're going to try, um, just try fruits as a sweetener. Um, rather than added sugar, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. even if you're giving them baby rice, you can add um, you can add sweet fruits into that, like a mashed banana, to sweeten it with, rather than anything else. Mm. Um, how about children's growth? So when children are having growth spurts, yeah. So when children are having growth spurts, they, when children are growing, they really need calories. That's what they need. They need vitamins and minerals as well. So vitamins and minerals are mainly found in fruits and vegetables. Um, so those are important as well. But what they need most when they're growing is the calories and the calorie foods. So that's going to be your starchy foods and it's going to be um, your fatty foods. Don't worry about um, the dangers of having too much fat and starch at that point. By starchy foods, I mean um, breads, rice, um, grains. It doesn't have to be rice. It can be wholemeal rice if you prefer that. It can be queen quinoa if you've got a child that likes that. However, children probably haven't de- developed those refined taste buds at that stage. So just what you want to do is be giving them enough calories for growth. Because funnily enough, an eight-year-old child, uh, my son's eight, and an eight-year-old child needs the same amount of calories as a woman. Uh, that is a lot of calories. Mm-hmm. And in order to meet, yeah, and they can't always manage the same amount, the same portion sizes as, as us. Mm-hmm. So you're probably wondering how you get that much calories into them. And it's by giving them snacks. So, you know, children will always be asking for snacks. Can I have this? Can I have biscuit? Can I have crisps? But it's just trying to get as much into them as possible. They need two, as well as three meals a day. All those meals should have starchy foods in them because that's where the calories are. And as well as that, give them two very, um, some two high calorie snacks every day, at least two high calorie snacks every day. Um, and that could be a yogurt, a non-dairy yogurt if you want to. It could be homemade homemade things, um, homemade healthy um, snack bars, or it could be you just need to get the calories into them, and that's with the starchy foods and the fatty foods. Okay. Um, if you want, if they're not too keen on vegetables, as children can go off vegetables and fruits as they grow up, even if you've always been a healthy household, um, just get give them a multivitamin to help support growth, just to make sure they're getting all the vitamins that they need. If you're into juicing, juicing can be a good way to get more um, um, nutrients into your child as well because they like to get involved in that. If you get them involved as much as possible, get them juicing different vegetables. Make sure to add sweet vegetables into there as well or sweet fruits as well as the green ones um, so that they they, they get the, the vitamins and minerals that are in those things. That's a great point, actually. There's a lot of, I'd say children, but I'd say a lot of older people that don't really understand the different um, fruits and vegetables and what they are and what they look like when they come out of the ground and all this kind of stuff. So, yeah, Yeah, like you said, why would... We wouldn't be... Well, maybe it's just me. I don't want to eat anything where I don't know what it is or what it looks like or where it comes from. Do you know what I mean? So why would you ask Mm -hmm. a child to eat something? You're not explaining what it is, where it comes from, and and to them it's it's all just looked all funky and there's no explanation, so... You, yeah, yeah. It's, it's quite simple really when you really think about it that you know explain what it is get them involved yeah. in the cooking process and everything and then it's a fun thing rather than something that's been enforced on them so that's some great advice most definitely yes. yeah um it in, is it's exactly that mm-hmm. would you say that adolescence is the same group of foods or is it different foods because obviously we've got a lot of hormonal changes is there any any um, food groups you would recognise for male and female? Different, obviously, there's different hormones going on to kind of um, what do you call it to yeah. kind of deal with that and it's everything, the, all the yeah. emotions that are going on. Is there kind of food groups or certain foods that would help with that? Yeah. This is quite a difficult age um, because uh, adolescents going into teenage, they start to go, a lot of them start to go off healthy foods. They start to go off the family meals and they just want they want chips, they want McDonald's, they want Things like that, chicken, Kentucky, those are the things that they want all the time and it's not the things that you want them to have. The thing with that age group is similar to younger children when they're going through the growth spurts. They have another growth spurt at that age and that what their calorie needs are actually higher than adults in a lot of cases. And so are their vitamin and mineral needs are higher than adults in a lot of cases. And um, the ones that we need to be careful of especially are calcium, 
that's a key age for building bones. Um, through childhood, actually, up until a certain you see your 20s, you're still building bones, building bone density. Um, and we need that bone density so that when we end up as older people, we've got strong bones. Because after a certain age, you're not building bones anymore and you just got bone, your bone um, mineral density depleting. Um, so if we build up a good enough bone density in our adolescent and child years, that's key. And the key for that is calcium and vitamin D. Um, calcium is found in a wide variety of things, not just dairy products and non-dairy alternatives. It's also in nuts, it's in greens, and those aren't necessarily the food that adolescents are going to want. Um, so you might want to think about, again, not again um, other techniques for getting the foods that you want into them. Um, they may not be interested in eating vegetables, but they may need to. Um, teenage girls, a couple of studies have been done on this, and um, teenage girls in particular are quite, on the whole, quite, um, quite, quite far off what they need in terms of iron, quite a number of B vitamins and other minerals and vitamins as well, just because of the foods they're choosing not to eat at that age. So again, I would recommend other techniques. Um, they may not be, if they're interested in juicing, you could introduce that as well or getting a multivitamin into them to make sure that they're getting their needs met. It's at the age where they're starting to menstruate as well, so they're definitely going to need more support from iron um, in that case as well. Um, also, vitamin D. Vitamin D is important across the life course, not just for black people, but for everybody, particularly for us. And um, there's a bit of a misconception with vitamin D. Um, people think that because we're black, we need more of it, but it's not. that's not the case. What it is is that we... We all need the same amount of vitamin D, but because we're black, our sun prevents the sun from giving it to us, if that makes any sense. Um, so how it works is that the sun hits your skin, and your skin's got a pre-hormone in it that converts that. It, there's a long process that happens, but it starts off in your skin. Your skin needs to accept the UV rays from the sun in order to start the process of making vitamin D, but because of the melanin in our skin... Um, the melanin actually comes, tries to come to our defence and stop some of that happening. It starts to, tries to, in its effort to protect us from some of the UV rays. So we need to be in the sun for a lot, lot longer to make the same amount of vitamin D. And the darker your skin, the longer you need to be in the sun to get enough of that process happening. Um, so I would recommend a vitamin D supplement because you're just not going to get enough sun in this country for that to happen all year round. Not even in the summer sometimes, unless you get the odd rare hot day. So those minerals are the most important ones, I'd say, for growth and adolescence. Again, it sounds like the key is here to actually have these conversations with them and explain yeah. why they need to eat certain food groups and it will make them feel better and, you know, it'll uplift them in themselves and, you know, temper their yeah. emotions and all of that. Like, overstanding is key. Once you something's explained to you, you're like, oh, okay, well, that makes sense. I will try and do that. Obviously, I'm going to have cravings for these things that I shouldn't have, but I'll try yeah. and do the other things as well because I exactly. get the benefits of it. So um, we're going to carry yeah, I on. I think with... it's about meeting them. Oh, sorry, go on. <laughs> go on, sorry. I was going to say, I think it's about meeting them halfway as well, because if you tell somebody not to do something and not to have something, they're just going to crave it anyway. You can't stop their craving. They're going to crave it, and eventually they're just going to have it. Or they're going to say, they're going to start playing little games, like, I'm not having that food because you're not letting me have mine. So just maybe negotiate with them, let them have the foods they want sometimes, but as long as they have your food, some healthier food sometimes as well. Exactly. And when it's, you know, one of those forbidden fruits, you know, they're going to try and pick it. So, do you know what I mean, yeah, you're kind of exactly. setting yourself up for failure there. <laughs> so. so the next um, life stage I want to go to is fertility and that, you know, in men and in women. Are there any particular food groups um, that can help with fertility? Yeah, I think it's similar messages across the life course, really. So facility, f fertility, um being a healthy weight is one thing that can help you with your fertility anyway. And having a good nutritional status, and that's all the microvitamins as well. Um, a common problem that a lot of people have, especially in our community, is endometriosis, endometriosis and problems with their menstrual cycle. And that can happen from a young age as well as an older age. Um, and the key thing there is um, antioxidants, antioxidant vegetables. Um, again, it's having a wide variety of vegetables because antioxidants are found in lots of vegetables and those do help us. Also having healthy fats. Um, so that's the omega-3 fats found in um, your oily fishes and in 
not certain types so not certain, a wide range of foods actually um so just having a healthy balanced diet um it's particularly in terms of fats and antioxidants is very important for fertility okay and what about um pregnancy are there any particular foods that you would recommend for pregnancy i know there's obviously some foods that you can't have which you could tell us around, about as well because some people might not be aware of it but are there some that yeah. um, you would recommend yeah so fertility um Folate is very important. Folate is um, found predominantly in vegetables, particularly green leafy vegetables. Um, that's important for for preconception, so for before you get pregnant, as well as during pregnancy. Um, just it can help with fertility before conception, and it can help prevent um, neural tube defects in the embryo as well in the first stages of pregnancy. So it's important to have that. Um, other things to avoid while you're pregnant are... Um, are um oh sorry my mind's gone blank just it's important to avoid multivitamins so i've spoken about multivitamins at other stages of the life course but at this stage i'd say just go for um, a healthy balanced diet you don't necessarily need a vitamin um i'd take folate throughout your pregnancy and vitamin d um but apart from that try to have a wide range of fruits and vegetables just because um high doses of vitamin a can dam- can be dangerous to the unborn baby and vitamin D A is found in multivitamins um, quite commonly. Um, as well as that, just making sure that you're having a good, a, a, not, not, a decent amount of calcium in your diet as well. Um, because anything that the baby, the baby will need all of these nutrients, whether you eat them or not. And if you don't have these nutrients in your body, your body's going to find it from somewhere in you. And you might find that if you're starting to lose weight, it could be that you're not eating enough calories. Um, so because the, the baby is taking your calories and giving it to the baby. Um, some people are sparking about problems with their dental health during pregnancy. And that could just be because there's a shortage of um, calcium um, in your diet and your body's taking the calcium from your teeth or from your bones to give to the baby. Um, so just make sure you've got enough um, nutrients in your diet during pregnancy I know that's quite hard in the first three months um, but once the sickness the sickness settles down and you're able to hold more food down just start eating a normal balanced diet remember you don't need to eat for two either that's a bit of a myth and um, you only start to eat need to eat more calories in the last trimester of pregnancy so the last three months um, when the baby's growing really rapidly is when you do start to need to eat a little bit more. And it's not quite as much as eat, eating for two. It's more like eating for one and a bit. Yeah. Okay. So what, what is it about vitamin A that is so detrimental to the fetus? So um, most vitamins, a lot of vitamins your body stores or your body um, just gets rid of if, it, if it's had enough of it. Um, but vitamin A can be toxic in large doses. Um, it's, it's one of those vitamins that even... If you're not pregnant, you can have two higher doses of vitamin A because there's two forms of it. There's a vegetable form called beta carotene and there's a meat form um, called retinol. And it's the meat form that's dangerous in higher doses. And what you're going to find in multivitamins is the retinol form, which is a meat form. Um, so that's why it's important to just avoid that. Beta carotene is not too bad. Your body can handle that in large doses. And beta carotene is found in foods which have um, a natural orangey colour, like carrots or squashes or pumpkins, and also in beetroot, purple fruit, purple foods as well. Um, So those foods you can have a lot of, just be careful how much um, retinol you have. Wow. Um, So we're going to finish off with the elders. Are there any that would help, for example, um, coming into winter time, um, are there any foods that they should try and have more of? to try and build up their immune system and, you know, keep them nice and healthy? Yeah, so immune health. um, Immune health depends on quite a few things. And I think the thing with older older people, there's food advice that I can give, but there's also just holistic advice. So a lot of our job as dietitians is to give people um, advice holistically, not just about food, but about lifestyle, physical activity, sleep, everything gets involved into it. And I think for older people, as well as just again making sure you're having a healthy, balanced diet, just trying to get enough calcium into your diet and vitamin D. Um, I think movement is very important in this age group and getting outside as well. Um, I think a healthy immune system relies a little bit on exposure to 
exposure to different environments um, and there's a tendency is when you get to, when you get older you're not able to get outside as much some some elders become housebound and so they can't really get outside and I think it does help you it does help you to become exposed to a lot of, of to get exposed to the outside environment so if you're able to get out into the back garden occasionally it's good to do that as much as you can even though it's cold I know it's cold so that's not going to be so easy in the winter time um giving yourself a bit of good but good gut bacteria is important as well so probiotics um getting a dose of that um probiotics are things that are it's your good bacteria um which is found in different types of food products actually and taking it helps it helps with your immune system um in our colon which is our large intestine that's well a big body of bacteria lives and it's good it's part it helps to keep us who we are um and it actually even affects your immune system that good bacteria does so keeping that population healthy is important especially if you have a lot of health products and you end up on antibiotics a lot antibiotics can kill that population um or they can deplete it so then taking a probiotic afterwards and you can get them in tablet forms or drink forms is quite important to keep in your immune system healthy finish today's episode um, with covering some of the conditions that affect our community and any advice you have you know with regard to any nutrition any dietary changes that people can you know take on board and, and try and work into their lifestyle so could we please start off with diabetes so diabetes it's going to be more about food cut, cut down on your starchy foods yam banana dumpling um, rice and I will love them I love them as well but just cut them by half cut the amount you have on the place by half quarter place of those foods those foods are damaging our health they're leading to excess weight gain um, that is my advice for diabetes the one thing I'd like to take home okay heart conditions heart health it's all about your good fats it's about weight gain as well um, but you've already got that advice for diabetes so I'll take the diabetes advice and add on to that healthy fats Omega threes. Let's think salmon, mackerel, sardines, um, um, that food group, pilchards, herrings. Those are full of omega three fats. And um, there's plant based ones as well. But choose at least two of those types of oily fishes every week. Sickle cell. So sickle cell. Oh, that's a good one. Um, I'd say just eating a rainbow fruits and vegetables, keeping your immune system as healthy as possible. Um, it's going to be, it's going to, there's not really food based advice I can give you for the pain and symptoms you're going to have with sickle cell. So all I can advise is that you keep yourself generally healthy um, keep your kidney healthy, kidneys healthy as well as um, kidney problems can result from having sickle cell. Drinking plenty um, of fluids every day um, avoiding caffeine as much as you can um, just to keep your kidneys healthy. Um, mental illness in general, I know this is a hard one because mental illness yeah. isn't general, but you know any particular foods that might help with that see i don't think mental uh, mental health is related to it's multifactorial there's more than one thing that's going to influence somebody having mental health problems um but just trying to prevent trying to trying to prevent it with food alone is not going to work um for depression there's foods that can boost your mood um definitely higher intakes of fruits and vegetables have been proven to boost the mood boost your mood um bananas have got a uh, um, a nutrient in there which is definitely linked to increased mood boosting it boosts your mood hormone so having having a banana a day then so are there any that you would like to add to that yes let me think so in our community i'm going to choose um high blood pressure just because i think that is really common and it's going to be it's going to be similar to diabetes in a way so with high blood pressure it's just cutting down your salt intake please cut down our salt intake there's ways that we can um still get that same flavor out of foods with cutting down your salt by half um so try to cut your salt by half that's one thing add less soup, salt into the cooking um remove don't add salt at the table um and actually surprisingly adding lemon juice so add a bit of salt add lemon juice and garlic to your food can give about that it can enhance the in flavors the same way that salt can um, so just replacing some of your salt with lemon juice and garlic for high blood pressure. 
If you enjoyed that and you would like to hear more from Maxine and you want to hear the full episode, all you need to do is go to denil.co.uk and to find out more information on her works, you can check out her site, restoremynutrition.co.uk. I will also leave that link in the description. Now, whether you are bountiful in food knowledge or have just arrived at the table, I hope this episode has left you feeling nourished in mind, body and soul. Speaking of soul food, I'm going to leave you with the sounds of Chronix Spirulina. I hope you have a wonderful week. Make sure you're back here next Wednesday. As always, blessed. Love. Spirulina build up my confidence Rastafari run the continent This King Selassie I pay the consequence Don't get it confused God, give me a bottle of Spirulina And make me mix up the roots with Medina Come off a door and me need feel weak So me go a up road and go link viva What good for your nerves so what's a pants apart A coconut water for wash off your heart Hey, nobody could have said Rasta soft Me go link viva fast and never fever grass Hey, Spirulina we blending so you know I'll be spending Every dollar out of me bill fall Hey, a buckle of the green and a it make me clean So me skill like a land still cold If you not know, get it you will lose Make your food be your medicine, your medicine, your food Blend up your carrot with the lettuce in a juice No free free mix your vegetable with the fruits Dad, give me a buckle of Spirulina and make me mix up the roots with Medina Come off a tour and me need feel weak So me go a whoop road and go link fever Hey, give me your bottle of spirulina And make me mix up the roots with Medina Me brother Teflon one give me a niece We drive go a whoop road, go link fever Me I want you to take my body serious I know anything can go in a me teacup Me live like a king like niggas niggas Caesar drink rum till him body sees up But me go link fever Viva, he said he got it right here One buckle of spirulina and I cut a right beer And me no like weed, it's that on me worst nightmare And no give me any sin, no give me red stripe beer Just see me a buckle of spirulina And make me mix up the roots with Medina Come off a door and me need feel weak So me go a whoop road and go link Viva Oh, give me a buckle of spirulina And make me mix up the roots with Medina In a me house soon look like a creature Call me go a whoop road Gulling Viva, Stunt Buster, choose well. A buckle of sabata, spirulina, coconut water, ah, blood tonic. In world where love chronic, get it in your mind if you not get it, you will lose. Your food be your medicine, your medicine, your food. Blend up the carrot with the lettuce in a juice. So I'm afraid for mixing vegetable with the fruit. Hey. Spirulina when we drink with Medina. Spirulina when we drink with Medina. Spirulina when we mix with Medina Spirulina when we drink with Medina Again Spirulina when we drink with Medina